Hi guys, Mike in the Woods here. Welcome back. Today, I wanna to go over the six basic steps for designing and 3D printing something useful for outdoors and everyday carry use. From imagination to reality. And real quick, before we get started, if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on important videos. Hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Leave any questions you have down below. Now let's get started. Step one, conceptualization. So we both can agree that the first thing you want to do is figure out exactly what it is that you want to make. Are you bridging a shortcoming in your gear? Are you fixing something? Are you improving on something? Nail down exactly what it is that you want to create. In my follow along example, I'm going to redesign one of the survival snap cards that I was unhappy with in my video on five 3D printed bug out bag items that I carry, which I'll link to in the description below. And essentially, the fishing survival snap card model I found that had fish hooks and lures on it looked like it could use a bit of improvement. I decided it needed the following modifications to make it more efficient and reliable. Firstly, lures need to be smaller as it's not meant to catch big fish. It needs more variety in the lures, specifically three different kinds for adaptability. And finally, fish hooks need to be beefier to survive the forces applied by a codfish. As you can see, sitting down and really brainstorming your 3D print can give you some great ideas. Step two, designing. Okay, so you've nailed down exactly what it is you wanna make. Now you have to put pencil to paper and blueprint out your design. The obvious aspects are your dimensions. Knowing exactly what size everything needs to be is certainly important, as well as considering the limitations of the plastic, but there's other 3D printing specific considerations that need to be made as well. The first one is orientation. 3D printers print from the bottom up, drawing items layer by layer. Imagine if you have the flat bottom part of something mid-air and the print head has nothing to print on. Your object should be designed in a way, if possible, that any flat overhangs are on the bottom of the model sitting on the print bed. Now, 3D printers can create a sort of support scaffolding to get around this, but it will require some additional cleanup afterwards. The second consideration is how the material layering will affect its structural integrity. While layers get some pretty good adhesion, 3D prints are definitely weaker with force applied in a way that causes torsion against the print layers. In some situations, this could cause the layers to delaminate and your 3D print to split perfectly along a layer line. Design your item in such a way that it applies force in a perpendicular manner to the way the object is printed. With the survival snap card redesign, I'm already lucky in that the design lends itself in such a way that the forces applied to the hooks and the lures are already perpendicular to the layering. The overall size of the snap card is staying the same, and with larger fish hooks and three smaller lures, this is the design it came up with. I beefed up the fish hooks in the bend to take more of a beating, and three different fishing lures give me some options. Step three, modeling. So you've got your design, now it's time to turn it into a digital 3D model. If you've never used 3D modeling programs before or are otherwise unfamiliar, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube for you to learn how to model. But if you're already familiar with an app, pretty much any 3D modeling software will do if you're proficient with it and can export to an STL or OBJ file. If it's a simple model like my snap card, you can simply use your blueprint as a visual reference but for more complex stuff, you can totally draw a complete front, side, and top shots, scan them in, and bring them into the modeling program to use as a direct reference for modeling your item. With your finalized model, in addition to the previously mentioned design criteria, you want your model to be clean of any defects. It should be sealed, which means it has no open faces. Imagine for a second that your model could hold water, and if there's any holes in it that water could leak out of, it's not a sealed mesh. Remember those cubes you used to cut out of paper and fold up into a 3D shape back in elementary school? It's basically like that. You also want to triangulate your model so that all of the faces have three sides to them. Step 4. Materials and Settings The model's done and ready to print. Now you just need to pick the right materials and settings with your favorite 3D slicer. There are many different plastic types that 3D printers are compatible with, each with different properties. However, for the sake of simplicity, we'll focus on one particular plastic type that suits our needs for EDC and, most importantly, outdoors use, ASA. ASA is important because it's a type of plastic that has similar durability and properties as ABS, another common 3D print plastic, while also offering the most important characteristics we need, strong UV and weather resistance. 
That way, our 3D printed object doesn't deteriorate when exposed to the rigors of outdoor use. As for settings, most of them are generally up to personal preference and individual quirks of your specific 3D printer, but the important setting that we need to discuss is your infill. This setting controls how solid your print is, with 0% infill representing a hollow print and 100% being a completely solid print, and the in-between being varying levels of crisscrossing scaffolding on the inside. 100% infill will obviously give you the best durability, but it'll also weigh the most. You can try and find the perfect balance between durability and weight, but I generally just go for 100% infill right off the bat. For my fishing snap card prototype, I'm using basic PLA, which is a simple biodegradable corn-based plastic for testing purposes until I finalize my design. Step five, printing. This step is pretty straightforward. Toss your file on an SD card, put it in the printer, and let your printer do its job. Depending on the size of your print, this might take some time. Luckily, my survival snap card is small and only took 20 minutes for the initial print. And the final step, testing and refinement. The print's done, now it's time for the most important step. Checking it out to see if it matches your expectations. Is it the right size? Is it the right weight distribution? Is it too weak in a certain spot? With any new gear, especially one designed and made yourself, testing it out is important to identify defects and areas of improvement. It won't be strange or out of place if you need to go through a few revisions until you finally get something you're happy with. For instance, my fishing survival snap card redesign turned out to be way too thin. I only made it one millimeter thick instead of two, so I doubled its thickness and printed off a second copy. And honestly, with the second iteration, I'm pretty happy with it without actually taking it out and testing it, although maybe I can make the holes a little bit bigger in the next version. Well, that's the general gist of designing and 3D printing a custom tool for outdoors or EDC use. This isn't intended to be an in-depth, detailed, step-by-step -step guide, just a simple, six-step overhead process to guide you in your own adventures in 3D printing. If you have any specific questions, leave them down below and I will make sure I answer. If you're new to the channel, I explore the intersection of fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences, so check out my other videos and consider subscribing. And lastly, hit the like button if you found this video interesting. If you want to help out with the channel, check out the links in the description, such as the link to my online 3D print shop where I sell a variety of outdoors oriented 3D prints and paracord items. And starting from today onward, I actually have a special promo code for my wonderful YouTube viewers to get 20% off their entire order on my shop. Use promo code SHAMELESSPLUG at checkout to get 20% off. I'll also link the model of the survival fishing snap card I made if you want to print off your own. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next video.